Welcome to Show Studio. It's the Couture Week, but we're not talking about couture. Such is the mayhem of fashion scheduling and showing <laughs> at the moment. Well, you never quite know what's going to be, what you're going to be seeing. Um, we're talking about the Vetmont show. Obviously, Vetmont love to uh, put on quite a spectacle um, in terms of what they show. Definitely one that always splits opinions. Um, I think this one has done particularly, um, but gives us a lot to talk about in relation to sort of everything from design and the clothes themselves through to ways people are presenting to sort of the issues and the sort of social and political context that fashion is existing in at the moment. Um, I've got a great set of panellists with me who've joined me, despite the fact I have flu and I'm probably going to make this sick, <laughs> um, to unpick the show. I'm really sexy and glamorous. Um, but before we dive into our discussions, I'll let you guys all introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Dino and I'm an online editor at Because Magazine. I'm Lucy Moore. I'm a writer and director of Claire Duron Bookshop. I'm Rosie Wong and I'm a, a, a teacher at St Martin's and also a researcher. I'm Phil McTaggart. I'm a musician and music director. I'm Rebecca Gonzalez and I'm a freelance fashion writer. So my favourite people. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm going to It's all good now because like tomorrow I'm going to have to say the same thing. It won't be true. Um, so let's dive in. Um, why does Vetmont split opinions so much? And are we fans? Are we not fans? Are we ambivalent? Can you be ambivalent, or is it one of those things that really? You have to have an opinion on Finn. I know you have a lot. Of <laughs> no, you can't go to me. But I can because you're in season show studio <laughs> chatterbox. What's your take on it? Um, I mean, I've got a lot of thoughts on it, <laughs> but I think that the reason it splits opinion is because um, there's been so much uh, written about it. The press seem to go absolutely nuts for it, and I don't quite get why that is yet. What? Yeah. And what? I think that's it. Just frustrates me that there's such a level of attention and people the other, throw, you think other people throw around words it. like revolutionary. Yeah. Um, when I don't see that in the clothes. I think also it's because fashion. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's also because fashion had become quite corporate at a certain point. Yeah. It felt very corporate, and it didn't feel like there were these, you know, in the early '90s that we were talking about. Um, that kind of era when there were lots of kind of new young brands and it was possible to be a new yeah. young brand, it wasn't so expensive. Um, that Vetmont in the beginning seemed like the promise of that. It was almost like yeah. the 90s again, this kind of rebellious spirit and anti establishment. I wonder if it's also about like an aesthetic that you're not used to. Like, I was thinking a lot about the Antwerp 6 recently and I was thinking. Even, like, I agree with you with the corporate thing, but I also mm. think there's a sense of a wave coming from somewhere. So you think 1982, like, mm. Com Yoji, and then you think Antwerp 6, like, kind of 1986 or whenever it was. And then it feels like that's kind of impossible now to have this wave of new ideas coming from a place that's totally untapped. But, well, not, but then, but I was I know say, it's not, I think it has that sense sort of, of it. Then there's the sort of disappointment, in a sense, because they, they, they became part of the establishment. Mm. And, you know, going to Couture Week is... Mm. No. But it's kind of it's doing. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's kind of doing it on purpose. I think. Yeah. But I think you asking yourself why it's become so like kind of talked about. It's because I think fashion got bored at mm. some point, like a few years ago. It got bored of having, you know, a sh you come to a show, you do a show, you go to the next show, you sit down, you watch the, watch the show. There's like maybe a bit of set design in it, and kind of that was about it. Yeah. And then. I know like some people were doing it, but I think I remember reading it in the newspapers that like Anna Winter went into like an underground club yeah, to see the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like in the the first show they went like I think in Paris that they had in Paris during on the schedule Anna Winter went to, and that was kind of like when you know people started paying attention. Whether that's okay or not, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, mm. I don't. But really, that had yeah. the it feeling of the fashion early bubble of it, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, which we all need. I think you know, people in the fashion industry do take themselves a bit too seriously sometimes. But I think that's because they came from within the industry. Yeah, mm. yeah. And, it's and I think it's humor, a lot. I think. Yeah. I think it's a lot safer for the industry to say yeah. that they're but they, these guys are bursting the bubble when they come from inside the bubble. Yeah. Than and then other they, designers and then they who have been in. around for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen gothic lettering printed onto. Um, long sleeve shirts 
for a long time. Mm. This is not, there's nothing exciting about that anymore. Sure, it's actually kind of embarrassing it. to still mm. be wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Oversized hoodies is not new. All of this stuff that's in there that's kind of catching people's attention, there's nothing But do you new. think that's part of the appeal? I, I think it is yeah. exacerbated by the fact that if, when Demler is interviewed, which is relatively rarely, or when Gurm is interviewed, or even when someone like Lotta Volkova, who's their stylist, they all quite pragmatically insist that you know they're not trying to be political, they're not trying to make revolutionary statements, they're just making clothes, and that always baits the press, who are then in turn putting all of this sense of like politics and revolutionary message on it. And I wonder if that's part of the appeal. When I agree with you that there are other designers who actually maybe are trying to be political and are trying to make a change, so. but it's always political. You can, yeah. It's unavoidable because it's in a context. But isn't I think it? there is a so. huge difference between the intention of this label and mm. how it's been received mm. in the press. There's mm. a gulf that gets bigger and bigger and bigger each season that now they can actually play into and profit from. Mm. But I wonder if I think you know, we've made this the press. It's not. It's not like they made it in a way. Well, we're here talking about it as well. <laughs> yeah. kind of, it's well, like a very really small kind of thing. <laughs> Every season it gets really good views yeah. on YouTube. The people love it. Yeah. What's your take on it all, Lucy? So I've been very quiet. I know, <laughs> you have. I've been thinking. You sound ill like me. Made I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just not yet. Not I'm, <laughs> I'm just thinking. Um, I think that, I think that something that is really important about, about, what they're doing is there are the insistence you know whenever you do listen to an interview that any of them give they talk about the idea of naturalness and it the, I, and and um, what they're doing is feeling as being about them who they are the clothes they want to wear their own kind of their own biographies and mm. I think that that's why they would say that they're not being revolutionary or they're not being political because I think it comes from a very kind of in, intuitive is another word Daimler uses, um, instinctive position and um, I think that uh, it's something, you know, like I find what I find really interesting is that they they talk about, lot of Volkova talks about, you know, there are no subcultures anymore, which I think is very much the perspective of her generation, our generation, so not, you know, I, I think that it's a label that's kind of completely embedded in um, the business of fashion and it's appealing to us not to young people yeah. so it's using the language of subculture um, and and it's almost like an elegy for, for um, the 80s I, I think for a time when you know pre pre fall of the Berlin Wall when subcultures did exist and you could you know there you could align with, mm. yeah and there was also an, a yeah kind of agency that was um, reliable, you know, like if but you had a standpoint. It almost becomes like um, costume then, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't sense. think really, like, I would never buy these clothes or wear them. I find what they do really fascinating mm. and sort of provoking. I was always but like it's that, not a label like, to wear. Well, it is. Because I always thought that. Let me tell you. I really did. I always kind of thought this. And then I had a voucher <laughs> and I needed a dress. And I bought a polka dot that one dress. The one with like the kind of low back, not the one with the big collar, long yeah. sleeves. And I was like, that was quite nice. And I actually wore it around the office and I was like, guys, what does everyone think? And half were like, no. And the other half were like, yes. <laughs> and I kept it. And every time I wear it, people will come up to the me. The dresses and talk to me are very nice. Like, like very the nice. run people, and they mm. don't know what it is. They're like, this is weird. It looks like it's falling off you. What is this? And <laughs> it's quite, I haven't actually, it's one of the only things in my wardrobe that people come and talk to me about when I wear it. And it kind of changed my perspective on it a bit because I was like, actually, Maybe because we work in fashion, we're so used to like super long sleeves and oversized, so all the stuff you're mentioning about. But actually, when you slightly take it outside of sort of the fact that everyone's doing stuff super oversized, it does look quite striking and interesting. But that isn't, yeah. I guess I was thinking very much <laughs> about this collection, which didn't really yeah. have any of, any of those, those kind of, uh, Tim Blanks called it Muzak. Like yeah. the Muzak dresses, which are like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh my god, that's my reaction. I'm sorry to the black. Um, no. <laughs> I thought that was quite sweet. No, 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 no it's smart way of saying But no, I, th I think it's so popular because it puts so much. What's, you're talking about how it's. Why is it so popular? Because it's not revolutionary. I think that's exactly why. I think it's using very, very. Like codes that are very, very familiar, very kind of seen yeah. there, and mm. making still like. 
make people feel a bit uncomfortable, but still feel make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's like still a dress. Yeah. It's yeah. not like you know, it's not an avant-garde like Yoji creation or like a calm like a bubble or whatever. You know, like a two D piece that people are still like so like whoa wait. Well, whoa. It's not genuinely yeah. futuristic in the way that someone like exactly. Iris Van Herpen is like mm. actually exactly exactly. Yeah. So it's I think it's because no, it's but so even it doesn't have to be that level of calm bubble dress outrageous no, no. structure confusion craziness. <laughs> I think, you know, some people can come into the fashion scene and be truly revolutionary and giving you something so completely different, even if it is just completely minimal at a time when everyone's going over the top. Mm. And usually, I think with really revolutionary designers, the press is like not interested. Mm. Yeah. They don't want to give it or any Or they time. don't like it. Mm. Or they don't like it. Like with, and then it, ten, yeah. five, ten years later, everyone goes, oh my goodness, we totally didn't realise there's all these customers for this. But with this, it's been this kind of immediate um, but that's just also the industry. nature of the press. Like I was thinking about this with McQueen because, like, you know, when Savage Beauty came out, it's kind of weird because everyone was like, "Oh my God, McQueen was so amazing!" And it kind of like erased all of that time where people were like super, super horrible about him. Yeah, and said that right. He was, like, misogynistic. Right. Yeah. But then I also think you could have five years of bad press because the press was so much less. You know, it was newspapers mm. or magazines reporting on it after a huge delay. Mm. Mm. Now. We're in a climate where designers do two seasons at a house. So you'll never get yeah. out of the press. If someone's hated for five years, their business mm. will go bust. Yeah. Whereas before, there was less of a kind of. Do you think really? Hype. But it's also it's the hyperbole of the social media age, where mm, everyone yeah. has to know about everything instantly mm. and have an opinion on it instantly, mm. whether that's you know based on anything that's been had enough time to actually generate something, and then also it's like it's. It's things, they are very clever at what they do. They make it almost like, not cultish, but there mm. is something very much about, do you, are you in, do you get it? It's mm. kind of like being in with the in crowd. And people are so afraid now of missing the boat in any way or being mm. late to something that they'll instantly glom onto it, even if they don't necessarily mm. get, it, yeah. get it or agree with it or truly believe in it. Mm. Do you think people like it because it makes them feel smart? I Not think anymore, so. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> anymore, who, who really wears it? Who buys it and wears it? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> but you got a voucher, right? So that's, that's different. Who's actually buying it? That it wasn't a Vetmore voucher, it was a voucher for a multi brand retailer. <laughs> 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 the thing is, like, how? No, but, which like, I was gifted. <laughs> yeah, who's the wearer? I'm sure they didn't do that about what vouchers. Is, you ask who wears it. I was just. I saying. mean, you don't need to buy these clothes. The, it the, sounds ridiculously well, though. Really. Like, yeah, but I'm interested in who's who. Yeah. Because it's all, it, the joke is definitely on the consumer. I don't know. The thing is, like, those jeans that were, like, what, 800 quid or yeah, something? Yeah, 790. Yeah, they were, like, they were selling out constantly. Yeah, 890. And people were wearing them at the shows, and they were just so pleased to be in them. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. just, like, it is complete trophy clothing. It is. And, You'd see so many people who work in the industry wearing it, and it's like, this is not your usual style. This doesn't go with the persona that you've created. Like, it just looks really kind of wrong on people. Mm. But I think that is part of what Vetemont is, mm. is the fact that it, it pushes the kind of uh, business of fashion to like a, a complete extreme, mm. like the cult of the brand. You know, it's something. It's and I think that the the kind of antagonism that people feel towards it is is down to that because they're they're to it's totally uh, blatant kind of presentation of the way that fashion works. It cultivates desire through mm. through a cult of kind of a, you know of designer or mm. of, of a label or of an There's image, an and, and this yeah. just pushes it to its extremes. And so and when really you have someone problem. wearing like a pair of jeans that looks so weird on them and doesn't, mm. it's like the kind of totally the far end of that. And yeah. so it's yeah. becoming it's almost like a parody. Is, that is what yeah. is revolutionary. No, just, I mean, I don't think revolutionary is the right word, but that's what's progressive. It's, it's purely irony. That's all it is. Yeah. You have to remember yeah. that their name is Vetmar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, their agenda is irony. It's so but clear I don't know if it is. I think they just want to make money and sell quotes. But well, like, they I definitely want to make a lot of money yeah. because mm -hmm. they have a CEO who's sort of obsessed with But I, I, so with, with the irony thing, I really genuinely think, like, we get really angry about it and we say that it's ironic and all this stuff. But I really think if you like hooked both the much line detector test and really were like, what are you trying to do? They just want to make money in self clothes. Why do they call it Vetmon? And that's exactly why. Because they're they a bit funny make... in the way that like anyone who's an internet generation person who tweets a bit yeah. is like yeah. a lot. Those those people are all <laughs> 
only know how to express themselves through irony, and I think that's what yeah. she's talking about when she's talking but about the death of subculture. Really know how to is not being through. able to actually engage with things. But then they're fueling it with their clothes. You know, they're not trying to battle the fact that there's no subcultures, or they're not being right. revolutionaries. They're not trying to change anything. They're just using yes. this opportunity to do it. But then, I, if I can go back to that, and that was in my in the Balenciaga panel, like what I said is, you say they sell really well. I think mm. it's more of now become this whole idea of like, oh, if you don't buy it now, it's going to sell out. You mm. go. To Dover yeah, Street definitely. Market and it's on sale. Like it's literally it's a rail with like fifty percent off on the vetment. Like and it's yeah. the only thing that's on sale in Dover but, Street. But that's so like you want it to be. The, um, oh, what was it? What was it called? Was it like a sample? What do they brand it as? A sample sale or something? Whether they did in Korea? Sale? The, yeah, they did oh, like that. Oh, the Korean sale out with the Korean yeah, sale. Yeah, the Just, warehouse sale. Yeah, the warehouse matches. sale. That was it. And everything yeah. sold out. So I think you've got to look. Yeah. I agree with you. Maybe in London, people are getting a bit. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like I think it's more of like an idea of being so out and that fear of missing out. Yeah, yeah. But that's like said. a completely hype event, and people do that because it's, you know, they go there. It's all part of the thing, and like you can Instagram it. You can and only you buy can, it here. You, you can yeah. be, oh yeah, I got it at that thing. It's mm. like you know, flash sales work because you create that false demand. Yeah. But I think. When, in terms of people buying it, they want to buy like the key pieces, the instantly recognizable pieces, the mm. things that show that they get it. But how long that will last, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like this is working for them now, but I don't think it's going to be something that will stay constant. You can see from the new show that they realize that kind mm. of. <laughs> <laughs> that it's not really but that's you know, it's it with like it's interesting that you talk about like as a brand. Obviously, like aesthetically, people always like Margiela, blah blah blah. Yeah. But I can't think of another brand that's kind of buzzed up, done all of it. Like I, I don't know where to sit it in some way. I mean, they take a lot of their ideas straight from Hood by Air. Mm. Everything from like big stripper heels, which is something Hood by Air have been doing for a while. They use a hazard symbol in this, which is a, a, it's the logo for Ghetto Gothic, which was the party that started um, with Hood by Air. Mm. Um, they've taken a lot of things from the Hood by Air playbook. I mean, oversized hoodies with graphic prints of people like Marilyn Manson is just straight from there. Mm, mm. Um, so that's where I sit at kind of kind of late but then Paris version. The references are almost so ubiquitous that I don't know if you can even pin them on one brand. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. if you say the Hazard Stripe, I could say Peter Saville. Do you know what I mean? So that's what's sure. difficult with like because but none it's of so it's but it's so immediate. I mean, it's like taking stuff from you know, for example, or the ripped up hoodies remind me exactly of the stuff that Kiko Kostadinov was doing with Stussy. Yeah, people were saying um, the shoes were too. Yeah. He even yeah. took the yeah. shoe, they even took the shoes from Kiko Kostadinov. There's stuff that's so contemporary, and this is what the problem is with playing around with ideas that's so now mm. is that you're really just pulling from designers, young designers, mm. emerging designers, mm. and kind of putting it under your umbrella. That was, that's been, I mean, I don't really see it as a Margiela. I, I keep hearing people say, oh, it's like Margiela. And I'm like, for me, it does not have any, like has nothing to do with Margiela. The, maybe the yeah. idea of kind of, okay, I'm taking this kind of like and deconstructing mm. it and like putting, it's like the new show, like the first look was that coat, like the fur coat, they took like two coats, put it together, even the pair of yeah. jeans, you know, put two pairs of jeans of um, Levi's together and like priced them eight, 900 pounds. I think that may be similar to what Margiela was doing, but like, it's so not intellectual. This has nothing mm. to do with like. This is mm. so not like. This is not a thought process. This is like <laughs> a concept. I think they have a concept for a season, mm. and for each season, I think they kind of take a thing to what to laugh at that se this season. Last season, for the when it was couture, they kind of made a point of making fun of collaborations mm -hmm. and kind of making fun of the whole ridiculousness of how many people are collaborating now. Then they use what twelve people to collaborate with. There's like more, it's like 27. Yeah, or something. Crazy, it's like, yeah. and they kind of like made fun of those people that they were working with. Yeah. I, I think I, it was just I like so uncomfortable. I agree with that because yeah, like, it felt like Margiela, when Margiela first came out, there was a real kind of, um, there was a real concept there. There was a real kind of belief and a heart and soul to it. Well, it wasn't um, cynical. Then. It yeah. was not cynical. Yeah. It, and, you know, even the anonymity that he always maintained, you know, it felt like it was there for a reason. It wasn't just a sales gimmick. Whereas mm -hmm. this feels, a lot more like it's kind of you know all very knowing. Well, it's like it's 25 small. years ago, you know, huh? that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Of course, yeah. it's not the same thing. It's no. and it's it's totally. It could only be happening right now. Mm. Yeah, mm. like without doubt. And and it's true. It might not. It might not last. You know, for the net for another 10 years or mm. whatever. It's like we're in this very precise moment where 
you know, our everything we've known since the kind of I don't know, like the end of World War Two is kind of all shifting, you know, in a big way. I'm so, I'm <laughs> and let's talk about World War Two. <laughs> 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 like, no, it's really yeah. extreme what's going it on. It is, right and now. it's like, connected to social media yeah, as well, and, and the role what, of that, which you know, is kind of Gosh of doing his show in Kalin Kalin. I can never say. It. <laughs> you know, is this? It's there's a. These things are all connected. It's like well, I, I wanted to bring up Gosha as well because that I remember when that was first coming around, that really felt like an untapped subculture that, that people were discovering, finding these kind of post-Soviet Russian skate kids. But here. Yeah. Um, say again? Here. It was like untapped here, as in mm. like exactly. in the Western <laughs> world. No, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, For yeah, me, course. it was like, of course. Of course. <laughs> and that was of what course, but that's, yeah. that's what felt fresh, yeah, yeah. Yes. it was presenting was you with a subculture yeah, that yeah. a lot of people here did not have an understanding of or appreciation mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. And what was really exciting about it was looking at brands that were successful here among skate mm -hmm. kids, like mm -hmm. Supreme, like Thrasher magazine, and how they'd been reinterpreted over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, was ultra exciting. And I, I think Lotta is an absolutely fantastically talented woman as well. Mm -hmm. But this seems like it's it's kind of run so far with that and then run out of ideas mm. and is now looking back on that in such a kind of ironic and, and non-intellectual way. It seems a real shame to that kind of early atmosphere that it I had. I think Gosh is quite a different beast in some ways though, because Demna is like, you know, works in-house as a designer. Right. Gosha is this kind of multi, like mm. works across all these different fields from photography to film to uh, design and it's kind of been plugging away at it in a way for a while you know like mm. people are like, like Gosha did fashionistas and stuff you know whereas I, so I think it's mm. they're almost kind of different and I think Gosha had a slower burn in some ways yeah. I know mm. it feels very so. hypey but mm. yes yeah, it's, it's, yeah. 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 it's been here for yeah. a bit like you've seen this stuff and you've seen people wear it for quite a long time and the t-shirts are still going in a way you mm. know I don't I mm. even though for me I don't like Cyrillic doesn't like instantly mean oh my god it's so cool like, <laughs> yeah. because I actually we can't read it. So <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. I know what it says. I think it's like sport. You know, it's like, okay, like football. There's kind of a form. But there's like a beauty to Gosha's clothes. I think that's like kind of just aesthetic. Like you can appreciate but the colors. And I the, do get the colors I, and the, I, like I would the typography like, is very yeah. beautiful. But that isn't, didn't you think it's because it's like so exotic to people here? I, I just thought it was oh, really kind of yeah, kitschy, yeah, you know, mm. that was it's what I liked about yeah. it. It yeah, was yeah, these yeah. kind of really kitschy colours that I would never have dreamed of wearing, like, um, became really appealing all of a sudden. The Biggie Smalls jumper. I also it came along at like this time great. for like surface in fashion, you know, everything was about like slogans, which, you know, it was so ginormous over the men's wear, like everyone was doing a slogan. And it also came along at a time where like fashion was getting more androgynous, so women wearing men's clothes, you know, it was t-shirts, it was really easy for men to wear. Gosh, it was just at the right moment, and in a very similar way to, mm. what, to what we're saying with Betmon. Um, I mean, even like, look at that invite, like, that's so now, you know, it's like something that like, it's a, like a collector's item in a way, because it's this little driving license, everyone wants to like, every, every brand to get people to Instagram their tickets. Yeah. And they just do something like that, it makes them feel cool, they're like, oh, I was there, they did a different one for everyone, so it's kind of funny. I, it's just so clever, it's like, you know, like, I bet there are these big brands paying their sort of social media strategists, or like, um, not even social media strategists, they're like special events strategists, mm. like so much money to try and do something like this, and then... But there's something that I, ne I never quite get the theatricality in the show, maybe because I haven't been to one, but there's never... Um, I, I really enjoy these invites, I think mm. it's quite clever, but, but getting to the show, they always seem to do quite static runways. It's they often don't do kind of real theatrical um, moments that I would expect from the way people talk about mm -hmm. these shows. It's often to do with tension, so it's the location of where they show, like when they show in the shopping centre, and then you know, having like the Victoria Beckham concession next to them showing that club. It's often about these quite... I mean, Ironic. is the wrong word. Mm. Ironic, but also <laughs> just kind of like pithy in some way, you know? But like, I want to see like... But it's not like, true. Like, yeah. it's not kind of like... I think the problem is that what you're just saying, it's like mm. it's not, you know, it's a revolution to like some extent, and then it again feeds into the industry. It's not actually being, mm. you know, revolutionary, just showing, you know, like randomly in the, like on the fourth, like, I don't know, in the 
25th of May, mm. you know, yeah. whatever, and just showing wherever and it's not so showing control, like us like, yeah. and not showing with actual people walking down the runway, you know, coming up with an interesting mm. concept. Yeah. But if that was the case, I don't think they would be talked about. You know, I no, think no, the no, fact that they're they doing it still like very traditionally, yeah. but at, like a like a. At, at a glance, it looks something new and fresh. Mm. I think that's a basically safe thing. It's like when people yeah. do a new magazine, everyone's like, oh, this is really cool, you have yeah. to read it. It's always people that have worked in fashion, yeah. so like, this is <laughs> like, really like a new perspective, <laughs> even slightly. Like, this is everyone I've seen it's already. It's still like a magazine, it's still printed, yeah. it's still, you know, like the well, It's exactly yeah. the same format, it's exactly the same photographer yeah. in every other magazine, and you're like, exactly. Which is but why your book thing. is great because we often have people who I haven't seen before. That's how to lose the That's the thing. Do you think that because he worked for Margiela, he is an insider? Whereas we're used to this mm. kind of aesthetic and this kind of energy coming from someone who is, you know, young and emerging from an art school. Mm. So maybe we shouldn't. I think he's judged as if he was. A kind of a teenager just yeah, feeling things yeah, out, yeah. which isn't fair. No, he mm. presents as if he yeah. was one. Mm. So I think it is fair because he's presenting clothing that should that he's saying is about the street, but I think there is absolutely zero engagement with the street. But that's what I mean. That's why I think it's not fair that he should be judged in that way. Well, then he shouldn't present clothes that are about, <coughs> that. Mm. particularly this collection is about a kind of typical Parisian street. Mm. But a then that's a, that's a problem as old as time in fashion of designers trying to reference anything authentic as soon as yeah. you, you, as uh, designers soon as within the industry, but designers who come from not having a fashion school education can mm. actually come in and bring something completely different. But then I think he can in a way, if you look at his background, like you could say that about any designer as soon as they set foot in an art college, that then their inspiration is kind of lost. Do you know what I mean? Like I think... Mm. Not, not if they're doing stuff that's actually true to what they represent, mm. I don't think so. Mm. But if, you're, if your perspective is on street culture and a kind of democratic, <coughs> a kind of democratic vision of fashion, I think I you have think to that's be. What the perspective are you, are you is talking about show it's notes? A, it's it's like about fashion. It's about fashion itself. It's about business. That's why it's called Vestron because it's like, what are we going to make clothes? Yeah, and it's, I think when they say the street, street they mean what, the street. People, what fashionable people are wearing. It's the like they don't mean I, street in the way that a hood by for example, means street. I think. No, I'd be careful there because that gets into. I think that gets into different territory. I think this is. I, I mean, this is literally about. A typical Parisian, uh, typical Parisian characters. But, then that, like but that's like voyeurism, and so so that's not street culture. That's Isn't just humans. Kind of well, mm. It's this difficult thing with street. No, 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 no. I like mean, I'm not talking about. I, th I think we're getting confused with like um, coded words about black culture now. No, no, no that's not what I mean. I just mean like as in. <laughs> When, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think there's some problem. There are some problematic racial issues also oh, in the show as well. But I think it's just when they refer to the street, happening. it's this kind of like irony with any designer when they talk about the street, where it's like all clothes are actually worn in the street. And yeah, exactly. When yeah. people talk about exactly. the street, often they actually mean like looking around at what young kids are wearing. Yeah, yeah. But then I do agree there is this loaded term about people saying I was looking at the street that people think means something that is more to do with kind of mm. moving outside of fashion, looking at a broader mm -hmm. um, group of people, whether that does relate to ethnicity or what have you. Mm. But I think this word street has kind of become if, if, if anything, it's, it's almost our way of talking about smart casual. I think that's kind of what it's become for a lot of, like it's kind of like what cool young. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it, yeah. It, it kind of means nothing now. Like, you know, every designer's mm. like, I was looking at what the cool kids were wearing and I was walking from the tube station. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of like. Thing. You just came back from <laughs> Paris. But no, I, I think the key is that they would not, I think that what they're designed, that the thing is, what you're saying is that it's not true or honest in a way that, yeah. um, because I, what they're designing, what they're making is not the, what they would actually buy for that price themselves. Oh, no, I think they would. When you see lots of she's like wearing Celine, no. she buys Well, she does, I mean, yeah. now, of course, because she's like, I think, if, I would buy Celine if I was getting like just money. <laughs> 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 But like, <laughs> I would buy like. She's making that much money. Well, it's still fashion. I, mean, I know, but she like consults with so many people, and it's just I think like the, like all these. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm over <laughs> over. Um, yeah, but no, we're doing it. But no, I think yeah, I think they wouldn't wear those. They wouldn't buy like a like a badly tailored like jacket 
for like a thousand pounds. But then isn't that the thing that fashion always was? It, it's people who have that eye to find that amazing piece or to wear their boyfriend's jacket and it looks really great on them and it would never look that good on you. And then packaging that up and selling it back to people. That is mm. what fashion ever was. But you don't then sell it and don't you don't then like kind of say that it's like, it's us, it's honest, it's true. But I think it, I, th I don't know. Yeah, I think I know that's, the, that's know the kind of thing where it's like, if they said, look, we're making clothes and this is what, this is what it is and here you go like buy it or don't buy it we don't care that's one thing but the other thing is like whole genuine um thing that just ends up being like kind of like if you think about it twice and if you think about it like three times mm. and then by the third time you're like kind of like okay not but really. maybe there's like maybe this is a mistake to assume that what's na natural or genuine is good you know like yeah. it's maybe actually kind of natural to to kind of like we live in such a um, it's kind of, we, you know, it's like this depressing kind of post-truth, like, like news. maybe like what's natural and genuine is actually quite um, cynical, you know, like, I don't know. But I don't think we have to all be making clothes that are like very authentic and we should all be yeah. held to very uh, strict standards about where you come from and who you are and you mm. have to represent that because I'm, I'm absolutely against that and I really hate yeah. reading the word authentic when, when yeah. in oh, yeah. music, in yeah. art, yeah, exactly. in, you know, I think people should be able to experiment. But there is actually something very deliberately dishonest about this stuff that just irks me. It's mm. not simply experimenting with ideas and playing around with different... Um, you know, techniques, it's, it's, it's kind of deliberately misleading people. Do you think that, or do you, sometimes, I, I agree with you to an extent, but sometimes I also, and I really don't mean this to sound really rude towards them because I think they're very intelligent people, but sometimes I worry if it also comes from, an, it's an education issue, where sometimes I think the things that they've done that have really offended people, and I don't, if, I don't think they were trying to, I think it was literally a lack of education. They're young, they're promoted to, like, head design at Blensky, there's huge spotlight on them, mm. without perhaps the sort of, Training and certain sensitivity and understanding that you should have, and I think some of it is ignorance, not yeah, not, not that, even yeah. rudeness, you know, like or no, certainly yeah, on the no. But Queen was like doing kind of I don't know, like he was like I don't know. They're not like twelve or like eighteen, no, so they're like kind of like oh blah blah blah, but like I let's party. It's like, also just that just not it's it's them not knowing. No, certainly yeah. I think on the issue of diversity yeah. in their casting, I think they were just they were just kind of unaware and I, I think it was actually I remember at the time being very upset that people were demanding that they have a black model in their thing because that again felt so um, not what they were about and it's mm. fucking weird that no one says anything about like Com or Junior which and then right. well like people did say stuff junior. about <laughs> oops oh. <laughs> sorry I'm kicking off not, now. Not to <laughs> now it's getting <laughs> now it's getting <laughs> yeah. it's almost like the press yeah, but they, they're the a press product of a completely hyper. different yeah. time that's yes, why yes. Yes. yeah yeah but then it's the impossible the to ignore that conversation. Hype of mm. against them. They were like, a brand that's been called revolutionary isn't using black model. That was literally one of the highlights. But of the their headlines. perspective so like, isn't. Who's calling it revolutionary? I, I, I mean, as much as I disagree with a lot of what Vetmon does, I don't think they should have been pressured to do something that was not what they represented at all. I think they should in the context of Balenciaga, it's a global fashion. Yeah. That mm. was exactly yeah. the point I was yeah. going to make. Mm. And only at Balenciaga that made sense. But look, yeah. if you represent a tiny niche, you know. Um, you know, look, then I think you should be allowed to present that because it's right. very focused what they what they were doing. I, and I agree on Balenciaga because it's a global band, you have a duty to represent. But then surely with Vetamon more because they're saying it's a reflection of what we see on the street. Yeah. But then they're That's showing a very... But it's their street. You know, it's yeah, what street their, in the world? Yeah, like it's, <laughs> no, 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 look, yes. I think the That's first Vetamon show, it was their friends. And, and yeah. it just happened to be that they didn't have black friends. Yes. You know, and that's, and <laughs> I know, which is, which is worrying, but like, I mean, I come from Croatia. There's no black people in Croatia. So like, and I know, you know, from Georgia, I, I haven't been there, but like, I've been told that like, just, you know, there's like, no, there's the same thing with Gosha's show for Adidas, which although it's like Adidas is a global brand, it was about the World Cup. So it was kind of like racially, you know, a bit, weird but like even you know right in russia there's no you don't see black people just coming down up and down the street mm. so i think what there i think there at the beginning i completely in the beginning i completely agree with you i was kind of like okay but that's kind of they're like a niche thing they're a little brand but now they have become this global brand because mm. of all the hype and because kim kardashian is wearing it and all of the kind of like people that you wouldn't necessarily mm. relate to it is are wearing it 
they kind of, I think, I'm not sure, I'm not saying it is or it's not, but maybe do, they do kind of have the responsibility to start thinking about it on a larger scale. I think it's also spotlights this wider problem in fashion, which is that the non, I, th I totally agree with you um, in terms of sort of the specific um, place that they come from, but it does highlight this weird place of, of why in fashion we're so accepting and um, fostering of people who come with a perspective that is very white, and we're not particularly fostering of people who come with it from a, with a perspective that is very like, you know, they come from a majority white. Asian area or a black. Area. You just yeah. don't see that. You know, name well, me the last. Well, there's Grace Wells Bonner. Yeah, it is, but, but then <coughs> that's a, that is black culture. There's so many other ethnicities yeah. that you've seen, like, and. I, well, I always, I always remember me. hearing horror stories from some of my friends, Asian student friends who were studying fashion in London, who just it seemed to experience the most outrageous um, racism and kind of a very, uh, you know, it's that kind of big in Japan thing that we mm -hmm. kind of really feel like we should demoralize Asian designers. Mm. Or but this is the thing, like St. Martin's, a huge percentage of the students there are from wealthy Far East Asian countries. Mm. Why aren't those designers then staying right. around and creating collections mm. and influencing the London fashion scene? Mm. Is it because they come here to go back to family businesses and bring well, an education to it? There are of visas as well. I think yeah. the visa, the visa but we need to make that as something mm. that isn't an issue because but if there's talent to, it should but I worry that those designers wouldn't get that same buzz because their message wouldn't be so easily readable to a fashion press that is major majority white so like Vetman worked because even though the references were exotic they weren't too exotic mm. but then it's like if someone is coming with a perspective that is from like somewhere that is very very removed from where most of the fashion press have ever been or can ever understand it's like you look at it with Ashish, like why isn't Ashish getting the levels of like, oh my god, this is amazing, that vet will like. It's because most people are scared of the references and don't understand them and don't feel mm -hmm. comfortable writing about them yes, because they're like, well, yeah. it's not my culture. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's part of the problem of like, that's just the fashion time. setup, like it's so Western. But I don't, know. yeah, I don't think it's even like, I think East, like when you think of Far East Asia, you still have that representation because of the Yogis and the, um, the Kongs yeah. and all that kind of, there still is like a sense of, although it's probably not what, you know, like I think a lot of maybe like, you know, Japanese people would now be like, but that's not what Japan is about now. Mm. Maybe, you know, that's yeah. more of like our idea of Japan, like the avant-garde asymmetry or whatever mm. in black. Um, but I think the pr more problematic is like what about like Latin America? Yeah, you know, like that's well, it's like universal. It's like yeah, we talk yeah, about yeah, the globalization yeah. of fashion, yeah. but really it just means <laughs> us selling our ideas yeah. everywhere else. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. but I mean, look at everything. Definitely. I have to say, like, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly like saying that it's not just fashion. It's about mm. technology. It's about like music. It's about people being not being you know super comfortable with music that doesn't have at least a part of like Western kind of. I mean, mm. I'm sure you can. Um, I would deny that, <laughs> but I mean, I like. I'm talking about like pop music. It yeah. kind of like becomes, you know, like a thing that's kind of like going slightly outside the bo the border of what's comfortable and familiar. But then well, this weird. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I remember being very shocked at the BFA that pretty much every song that was played there was hip hop, and I couldn't, <laughs> I didn't understand why because it was <laughs> tons of very well-off white people getting up on stage and congratulating <laughs> each other to to like travis scott and all these and all these hip-hop tracks and i was so confused because uh and i think that just kind of represented it to me as we like the um we like the sound or or something like that of it but we are very reluctant to really um actually engage yeah with yeah. people in powerful positions because I think this whole conversation about sticking people on runways just avoids the whole issue of how we're actually bringing people into oh, the industry and also there's just there's a huge underbelly to all of it which is I like you know I think runway diversity is a huge problem I think it's a good place to start but then there's this there is the fact that like you look at you, like coming back from the men's like I was as much as I was casting my eye on the models on the runway, I was looking at the people there and they're just, it's so, like, it's not diverse at all, the people who write and work in fashion, which is why it's so amazing that you do have, like, your Edward Ellingfields and people like that mm. who come through. But, you know, it, it, it and even, like, it, it, there's this weird side of it, it's also where it's, like, the really dark thing, which is when you speak to people and they're like, actually, if we show them on a white model, they sell better in the countries that you're demanding, mm. we pay more attention to. Mm. Mm. And or that's the really well. messed I mean, up side of like, you're like, oh, why aren't there more 
black black models and they say well if we show our collections in countries where the population majority black on a white model will sell better and that's what's really fucked up with it all because you're like how is that true or is that you know it's just that weird undertone mm. to all of it but then of we like, have a, we all then have a responsibility to change that don't we in our positions because we're all in positions of some power I mean, there was also there was, <laughs> <laughs> but there was also um, there was an article not long about uh, not long ago about academic institutions and the number of black academics that there yeah. are, and it's like in, there are very few, and there should be more. You know, um, if if you know people from different ethnic minorities don't see themselves reflected at all in mm. the magazines in the universities, then you know. It makes it all the harder, but doesn't it? And then here we are, like our friends. I know, yeah. we get it all the time with the panels can't. where I mean, we, inv like, we yeah. invite like a huge spectrum of, of the um, of the fashion press and academics. We're always looking for new panelists, but it, the, it is so, so wide. Like the people who work in the London fashion industry, the people who work in universities, it's a problem. It's a real mm. problem for us. It's but that's hard. why we're really super proud of, um, of FDM at St. Martin's because we've had, you know, successful, very successful. Grace Wells Bonner was on our course. So, mm. Um, and then every year, you know, we're trying to kind of uh, improve on that. Yeah. You know, I think important. it's important that people also talk about it because it makes people really uncomfortable. Because it's not just about like having white catwalks, it's about having white designers. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and white press. And, and white press and white buyers yeah. and like, you know, it, it is just that case. It's not a she show as well. Like, it's, it's what you said, it's just so, like the last season, the spring, summer, um, when he did the whole like Indian extravagance, I think it made so many people uncomfortable. If you just yeah. looked at the front, I, row I had so much there. fun at that. Show. I, loved I loved it. it. I loved like it, it was. Like, I, mean, so it was I mean, it was quite. I mean, I remember talking to someone afterwards, and they they didn't enjoy it because they thought it was so literal. But for me, yeah, I came from. I I grew up in an area called Kingsbury, which is just always full of that kind of energy during Diwali and things like that and it was so nice to go all the way out from northwest London yeah. to the hub of kind of fashion and experience that again yeah. mm. um, and I thought that was such a fantastic show. Yeah because what a missed opportunity we live in the most one of the mm. most diverse cities exactly. in the world yeah. and you know still it's all white. Yes, it's definitely. Just, it's not a good thing. And Western. I think the thing, mm. the key word it's is not Western. just white. Yeah, Western, I think it's yeah. very Western. Yeah. I think, you know, it's still, you know, even the, yeah, even the multiculturality of it, it's still so like Western. There's mm. no kind of like true and honest. Um, and I think Paris actually has, I always experience this in Paris. I feel like Paris is a much more segregated city. Yeah. And I think that designers working there and taking the streets of Paris as their reference will tend to get caught up in that. Um, I think we're really lucky in London, um, but Paris has always seemed to me to be Double, very yeah. segregated, mm. um, and it has a lot of issues between communities mm. there because mm. of its. More so it's than London, yeah. Yeah, that's how it's yeah. built as well. I mean, right. if you think about it, the infrastructure of Paris, it's like yeah, in, it's like our own dismounts, which like each one is like you know this is an area of these people. Yeah. This right. Yeah. 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 And I think that feeds into what you end up seeing on. Yeah. Should we have a look at the show? I'm conscious mm. we could talk for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> have a look. So just to give you guys a little background of the show. So I've got so many pages of notes. Stressful. Um, so <laughs> it took place at the centre of Pompidou. Um, and I'm sure as everyone's been looking at, it's all based on these different stereotypes, like emos, stoners, nerds, bouncers, Parisians, secretaries. Um, yeah, each each is like a different character. I was really annoyed because I saw it and I was like, oh, I was like, it reminds me of Exactitude. I got the reference, and then they actually said that was their reference. So you know, when you're like, damn it. <laughs> so Exactitude, do you sell it in the shop? You should get it. It's very good. Um, so Exactitude, can you just go to the pictures, which is a, a book which is done by two uh, Netherlands-based artists, um, where they they take these photographs of different people in a way from different sort of subcultures or or sort of social groups. Profiles. Yeah, exactly, and, and these straight up pictures. Um, so there's like Gabba, all these different ones, and you get a sense of sort of how clothing is a signifier for sort of the social group that you're in. It is a really, really beautiful. But they're having a bit of a sort of moment, exactly, to do because it's a really long-term project. I think it's like, I can't remember how many years it is that they've been doing it, but they did a shoot like this in the new A magazine, the Gucci one, of all the Gucci staff, an exactly shot like that. It was really, really charming. Uh, so this was kind of the reference, and there were 36 different subcultures in total. Um, I think we can now look at the show. <laughs> I've given everyone the background. I really want to say one thing, like about it. Just uh, looking at it, um, like I think it's 
again, I don't think it was design. I, th I don't think it was like somebody, you know, like a pro, which is fine. I'm not saying that's bad or good, but I think it was like somebody who sat down and designed clothes. I think it was like, you know, let's come up with like how, how ma however many yeah. people that you think could look funny and then just like dr like make like a uniform for each of them it was like for me it was like a costume show or like a performance rather than anything like yeah. from the you know like a milanese performance is lady. an interesting word, yeah, yeah. No, in a very fashion way not performing it's in like yeah. a new and exciting way but i think but it's also their way of kind of sticking two fingers up to the criticism because we're talking about the way you know they stereotype and then it's almost yeah. like they're playing with how everyone stereotypes yeah. so the fact that they did like going back to look to the fact that they've done you know a bouncer and it's a kind of like it's a black male you know it's I think there is this element of they're like well you're saying that we're prejudiced but look at the prejudice that everyone else mm. has is that you immediately get what that reference is why do you get what it is because you see these people in the same way that we do and it is it's uncomfortable I think it made a lot of people uncomfortable in the show it's, definitely it's also the take I think on like you know you see go to shows and people have you know a Versace like warrior and a Dries Van and Traveller and a Prada like a you know like the last show you know like you had the last men not this show but last season the men's show for Prada it was like this traveler you know yeah. the guy and it was all of them kind of like all of them looked the same and this kind of to me looked like they picked like you know like a character from like 36 different shows and put yeah. they took one of them and basically ridiculed fashion for doing that kind of like character dressing yeah when you do like the yeah collection. like the chanel the lady in the sh like obvious chanel like yeah. suit it's, so in a yeah. way it almost becomes like um barbie or mm. cindy but yeah. you know where mm. you are the barbie the customer is the barbie mm. you know putting on identities but no one will buy it like that i think mm. i think also they're very like i think um Oh, I can't remember his review, but I think it was Sarah Moe's review on Vogue Runway. She kind of talks about, or, or maybe it was Tim's on business, I can't remember. Someone talks about the way that they're operating their business in that the pieces that have been selling, selling really, really well from past ready to wear collections are now going to make us like permanent mm. items. Sarah Moore said that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's almost like, you know, those dresses that we're used to seeing on the runway, they're now like almost staple like a t-shirt. Like they're a yeah. staple that was in there. So, so then in a way, like the show does become like more of a sort of performance piece. Which is, I guess, quite similar to how someone like a Tom Brown does the show, mm. where it's kind of like... <laughs> that was hideous. Oh I my God. loved it. That was <laughs> With the little long sleeve. It was oh so God. slow. It was amazing. And I was sat behind and... Because so the, the models came out the ones wearing the hoops, and they walked so slowly. Like, mm. I can't even... Like, how however slow show? that I explain it was, it was slower. <laughs> and I, I was sat behind Jason Ryder from T, who was very, very funny on social media. If anyone doesn't know yeah. they should. And he did Instagram stories the model really, really slowly and just wrote across it me rushing to your show which <laughs> made me laugh at the whole show but it is that kind of idea that is the kind of like the old school idea of the, of the catwalk show is this kind of piece of theatre mm. and then you know backed up with a sort of commercial collection which flies against I guess more I mean, more, I like people like well. Idris or what have you where it's like what you show is what you sell so maybe that is really couture maybe it is couture maybe it is maybe couture it's new. don't show me the look <laughs> don't show me the punk no, Why don't you like the punk look? It looks like you on a Sunday. Or the 18. <laughs> but so is 17 meant to be a homeless person? Yeah, that's yeah. what I, I want to say. That's disgusting. That's though. what I want to say. That's exactly what I Have we not yeah. learned from Galliano? Galliano's yeah. homeless collection. Yeah. Yes. I it. just think when there are all these people in tents in the snow in Greece at the moment, mm. that's just, just so uncomfortable to look at that. But then. Can we, can we just stay on the homeless look for a, a while, at number 17? I um, mean, even to be saying the homeless look, yeah, I mean, yeah, that really right. makes me a bit sick. Yeah. But then do you, there is an element, this I think, where people will argue that it's making people talk about an issue. It's making people no, it's not. Talk no. Sorry, it's absolutely it's not. Because I'm playing one that, but I, I do not think that's <laughs> <laughs> Those people that like, sat in the that's front the row Instagramming, like, it, like for me, I just, it was like, very, it, very interesting to see no one Instagram this really, really? unless to be critical, and everyone just skipped over it. So all of the kind oh, of big I mean, magazines yeah. were praising it, just people just didn't acknowledge it. Like it was really not but mentioned. The, it was like it didn't happen. But it also didn't wasn't mentioned in the review that. No, it was exactly. Like, you yeah. know, there's like it, I saw no, I saw it actually on Instagram. I was like, oh, now we're gonna all tie. Like I don't know where it was, but it was like now we're all gonna tie our coats with our dad's ties and stuff like that. It's like that's not the point of this yeah, look. Yeah. I think there's like something. You know, that's a typical fashion where it's like oh this is the it button but it's on a like a racist jacket or whatever yeah. you know it's just I don't know I felt like but it's like you so could really make a point about this like yes they right. are talking about the people on the street and sadly our streets yeah. are currently filled with homeless people displaced people it's a fucking disgrace but this isn't what they're doing yeah yeah, yeah. They, they're just they're saying look at that homeless person they look cool yeah, yeah. yeah. let's yeah. borrow that let's 
borrow that from someone who has Which no fucking so choice cold. about how they dress because <laughs> you know and then like sell it for and let's sell it for pounds. hundreds and yeah. thousands of pounds. How, um, can I? I don't know the answers. I'm asking questions. Have, have people not been talking? Like I thought that from the kind of inception of this heat of crisis, refugee crisis, people began to talk about how this would feed into fashion. And I don't know where that, like I've heard, I've heard this idea. Um, but this is, the most, this is the most depressing this is the way. Most, yeah. Yes, this is you like have, a total you have mirror. You seen a lot of focus on like protection and mm. all of that kind of sense of like, right. but that's but isn't not that a literal a way, reference. But isn't it so slightly kind of more disgusting for it to s kind of subtly enter? Well, I was thinking about when I was watching the Rick Owens men's show, so he did these huge puffers like wrapped around that did look like someone who was like carrying a sleeping bag on their back. And I kind of looked at it for a long time and I was like, is that the reference he's doing? And then I kind of erred on the side that it wasn't. But I wondered how people would read that. Would read that. No one really said anything. And it had a specific aesthetic. Like you looked at it, and it, it looked like someone wrapped in a puffer jacket with a sleeping bag around them. But then you think about refs. History it was, with it was one and idea and developed Rick's over history. a full collection yeah. that was very artfully done to kind of drop something in, you know, look by look. It, you can only come away with the most. I also, what I find really it. stressful about it, it is more than anything is everyone else, all the different characters are kind of celebrated for their like identity, whereas a homeless person, yeah, like, they have no identity yeah, yeah, right. other than the no, fact exactly. they're homeless. It's like you're not a and woman, is, you're is not a homeless. Punk, you're not a, I mean, is that a stereotype? Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. does yeah. that fit into that? It's just like you cease to be a person with mm. any agency or interest, you are just a homeless person. So it's like, but I. I think with the Rick Collins thing, I have to say, like, I think no one criticizes it because even though I'm not saying it's the same, but I think it's, you know, you're talking about it making it artful. It, I don't really, still don't really think it's okay. I think no one criticizes it because it's Rick Collins. It's, you know, it's so intellectual and mm. he has his own, like, Rick Collins army of people around mm. him. And, you know, it's like, you don't want to touch, know, I, you don't want to, like, say anything. I don't anything. get that. I don't think Rick is like that. I think he's more, I, I never get the impression with the Rick show that people feel like, um, like he's frosty or they're scared no, no, no. to criticize. No, I mean yeah. like he has this army of people who buy his clothes, you know, oh, like no, his lovers, yeah. you know, there's like passionate. So there's a yeah, sense of followers. So yeah, and I think like people don't necessarily, like fashion press doesn't criticize Rick ever, like truly and honestly, you get like, you know, Daily Mail criticizing it for putting like backpack women mm. and stuff like that. But um, I don't, yeah, I, I think I think it's, if, if that, I, I honestly haven't seen more than one like, or two books, but if that was the case, I would kind of, I think up. with Rick Same also, it's thing. just a thing that it, it has such a, like we were talking so much about this idea of authenticity and mm. Rick is the classic actually example of authenticity where it's kind of like, like um, him and Joanne Furness have this joke that it's like Ralph Lauren today, that it's like a lifestyle brand mm. and he kind of finds that really funny <laughs> because it kind of is, it's like there yeah. are people who really love yeah, it yeah, yeah. and they like want to buy everything, exactly. Ralph Lauren the way they want to buy everything Rick Owens. So going back to the idea of authenticity, he is a kind of classic example of that whereas this is just a very different... No, yeah. Why do you think there's not been more of a kind of... And it's interesting we were talking about the Galliano Homeless Collection because that almost got re... The history of that almost got rewritten but now people are relatively sort of celebratory of it and when people write articles about how Galliano kind of pushed the boundaries of fashion it's often mentioned as something fashion quite Asia. fabulous that he did and something, you know, that was very... Yeah. showed his social sort of consciousness and what have you. And because so many people in fashion are apologists. Mm. It's like he was, you know welcomed back in after such a short time and no one's mentioned his past since mm -hmm. it's like yes he had you know he did he said something awful he had a massive breakdown you should you should acknowledge it you shouldn't just we're also afraid of these you know personalities and egos and it does everyone a disservice yeah there's so much unsaid in fashion but it's also like... i think the fact that this is being shown during couture like it's not a couture collection but the people in town for couture are you know the one percent they're the wives and you know they earn their own money but mostly mm. they're you know they're married to dictators oil barons weapons whatever they're called mm. weapons sellers and it's not like people don't people are just so obsessed with like how much couture Still costs the fantasy of it they don't think about the reality of like of that in our society as well. Yeah. But I think uh, they would probably argue that that's what they're showing. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, being they're being like yeah. they're they're like big by like bringing the like wife of. But the then it's like you don't yeah. need to see a homeless person on the runway; yeah. you can see them in the fucking yeah. street, yeah. which you probably no, won't. Yeah. No, they don't. But they, they get straight, straight in the black. <laughs> 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 
straight to the cottage. And tinted windows. But yeah, exactly. But I think it's what you said. It's it's just a whole um, yeah. The idea of couture is this couture. I think but they not, want you to. Yeah, exactly. It as they're couture. not presenting, but they're also not presenting it as a season. You know, it, it doesn't really make that much of like. I think Vogue is putting it as autumn yeah, they winter put it as like or like, like some yeah cool, like yeah. autumn winter 2017 or whatever but that does not like I don't think they care about that anymore and I don't think we should care about like seasons anymore in a way uh, but I, I just don't know. I can't even think about seasons when I I know what, what, tell us more about what you think about it Finn because you kind of just said you hated it but you didn't <laughs> um well, just to take the punk look, for example. Yeah. I have Did you say more issue with the punk look than the homeless look? <laughs> um, I obviously immediately way. picked up on the punk look and was very <laughs> upset. Um, it kind of is the kind of same for a lot of the looks, really, because I have a more than cursory interest in, in punk. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just think it's, a re- it's actually a really unambitious punk look. Yeah. If you've done any research on punk, it's actually a really unambitious punk look. And I think that's the problem throughout. Is that it's also these like very second wave punk. It's not like action, like the mohawk. I think they weird. thought that painting it green is some kind of something different. And I think they think that's like kind of a different hairstyle. Oh, it's but good. do you the think they think, think the that that's different? Person. That's my very good. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah, really yes. Yes. Do you really think that they think that that's different? That's what my like. I, I have a feeling like they're very aware yeah. of it's what they're doing. It's cliches. Yeah, they're like they're like. I think they're so. I mean. I'm not defending them in any way, <laughs> but if that group of people, I think they're just, you know, like, again, I have to repeat the same thing that I said about Zach. They're kind of taking the piss out of all of us here mm. talking about it and over, like, uh, contextualizing, I, don't know, I think. I think there's a danger yeah. to kind of paint them as these. I don't, I don't know if there is that. I think it, it, it's. I don't know if there's this big sort of, like, charade of pointing and laughing. I think. The difficulty to criticise on this, with this is, and it's, it is clever in that sense, and we're all saying how awful it is that these stereotypes exist, and they're pointing them out, but we all know exactly what it is when we see it, which proves their point to be completely correct. Well, it's it's is like that a, these stereotypes it's a point exist. that a child could make. It's like yeah, exactly. a picture yeah. of a dog and saying, oh, look, that's a dog. I bet you knew it was a dog. I mean, it's really <laughs> yeah. easy. It's obviously really easy to put a mohican on someone and say that's a punk. I don't think that's a really... I mean, you're beginning to sound like, you know, when people look at Jackson Pollock and they say, oh, my kid could do that. And it's like, well, he didn't do that, you know, in the in post, you know, in 50s and like, New York. I'll take that I'm not, I would never say that a, a kid could do this, but I, I definitely take that point. Can we keep, can we keep scrolling? <laughs> but it does I just like, think it's um, a really sure point to make. I don't think it advances any particular argument. It's, do you um, think it's, it's like, like it's just, do you think it's like the black, the black mirror? Is mirror is and nothing's actually really it's happening. a little black mirror actually, yeah. very yeah. self-involved mm. commentary on something that doesn't really advance anything forward other than something quite stylish. And kind of just reminds you that we're in this kind of style over substance era, which is very frustrating. Mm. We moved into TV reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but so it's so really like, like, going to say something then. Sorry. What you say? Oh, I just uh, honestly, if I'm really honest, I'm just I find it a, I find it a little bit depressing because I was, it, I, you know, when Vetmon first came out, I was quite excited by it. The yeah. students were quite excited by it. Um, but this feels like something else now and especially with Trump and everything that's going on at the moment and you know the tweeting yeah. and well that's also I think there was that I really like, the women's march was like three days before and we were like better yeah. united than divided and this is literally the most divisive show in the world it's like look how different 36 or whatever or 37 different kinds of people are it was really pointing out like these interesting different like yeah the ways that everyone is exists in their own world then they didn't bring, you know, like those actual people, like in the show, for example. I, I was thinking I like think that. I think it was street cast. It was, and most well, I mean, you know, like I think it's very similar, and maybe people are gonna like hate this, but it reminded me so much of like the Dolce and Gabbana show, the men's one. In that way, <laughs> listen up. Wait, wait, wait. Have a point. It was a very kind of that idea of these social media stars oh, yeah. in their own universe. You know, you've got Lotta walking the show. You've got Ryan Skelter. Walk, walking the show you've got they're all of their friends and it's that kind of very like aesthetically probably like a very like direct and antithesis 
to like the Dolce and Gabbana show yeah. where it was you know like there's like famous people that are like all perfectly you know chiseled and all that and then you've got them who are like kind of you think they're oh they're like not perfect or whatever but they're very you know carefully selected group of people yeah. and it's not it's the same street level of cast, curation. you know like it's not street cast as in like oh we came up and like we really wanted to kind of represent again street casting I always have a problem with because people just that's basically uh, like asking people to model without paying them mm. a lot of times and um, I think a lot of times it's again taking in friends but I think here it was that idea of like street casting just kind of finding people that look like us and then or like what we want but to say. But can I just make the point that not a single one of us has mentioned any garment in there yeah. that we were but excited that's not by. The, I don't think anything. that's the not point. One. I mean, it. if you look at those people. Well, it's because it looks normal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and that is almost the kind of, I guess like maybe that is the big joke of it. It's like, yeah, because it, it looks like you're sitting on a tube carriage. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you're, you're, you're not, and yeah, there are pieces in it that are kind of interesting, but it's so normal that you're, that there's nothing kind of remarkable at all. And that's what they've always been accused of, doing things that are really normal, and people are like, why all the hype, it's so normal. And yeah, maybe this is their way of doing something that is normcore. Mm. The ultimate so, normcore. But that's, isn't, yeah, like what the thing that- With a bit uh, of kind of, you know, will people buy it? homeless people and as well. what does it mean if you, like, is it? You know, people I buy the t-shirts and all that. And some of the, some some of the people buy these things. things. They don't they buy either. that bomber jacket. No, I'll tell you what people will buy, is the last look is like a, is their metal look. And they've got patches on them. Wait, is it late? It's the very last Keep look. It's before the, the wedding look. dress. Um, oh, the girl. That yeah. one. There's that patches, like there's patches on that jacket, <laughs> which, and I, I looked into them because I was like, oh, maybe they've got some really good thrash metal bands on here. No, it says Colette, <laughs> it says Dover Street Market, yeah. it says yeah. all of these oh, stores, dear. and I cannot think of anything more embarrassing. <laughs> than wearing a Dover Street Market badge, which I is done in the style of a carrying thrash, thrash metal <laughs> logo. Yeah, that's But funny. people will buy that. People will absolutely buy that. It's like Louis Vuitton Supreme. I mean, that's going to be I outrageously expensive. I love Louis Vuitton Supreme. Oh, God. No, oh, no. God. Oh, no. I mean, it's really, really <laughs> clutching at straws if we're happy that that is where fashion is at. I right agree. Now. So yeah, I have to say. I, agree. I mean, it's I just horrendous. But do you think that this mm. is going to be kind of the end of that and we're going to move on to something else yes. so that's not fashion also Louis Vuitton Supreme is not fashion and it wouldn't pretend to be fashion and Louis Vuitton never brands itself as a fashion house it's about luxury and leather goods and that was a genius thing to do for a luxury leather goods company uh, from a from a, it's from really a who economic it as perspective from a business perspective sure yeah, yeah. Well, but that's what a luxury, luxury house is not about is, fashion you know. obviously that's but it's, it's just separate fashion. and it's the problem that comes with seeing seeing a Louis Vuitton show like minutes after seeing a Yoji show, whatever mm. you analyze everything with the same, mm. like you tie everything with the same brush in some ways, and I kind of admire it for being because so good at what Louis Vuitton is about, and that house, you know, and that's what Kim Joseph does so well. There is respond to a brief that is given to that house. Mm. I know Kim is a friend, so I know I sound like I have an agenda here, but I do think what he does is very, very suited to that and what it is. But I think um, what Alessandro Michelli has done at Gucci is far more appropriate yeah. for a luxury brand to actually bring something that's not just about whatever moment this is mm. that everyone seems to be having over there, to just come in, do something artful, beautiful, new, I just fun. think fun, yeah. sexy, it is about positive, is about escapism happy. Too. Absolutely, yeah. and I think those clothes, you know, they're they're as expensive as Vetements, as they're expensive as anything. It's still Gucci, it's still a luxury yeah. house, but they're and actually aspirational. They're yeah. ambitious, and I think it's positive as well. Like you know, when they were doing all this, that kind of very um, Oriental style and embroidery and kind of amazing fabrics and jacquards and everything, mm. it felt like a sort of utopia. Whereas I think this feels like a dystopia. Right. Yeah. Also, with with Alessandro Michele. I, it is charming because he is such a fan and it's not cynical mm. at all. Right. It's all the stuff mm. he loves. So I right. get it's easy to like in mm. that way. But it's genius in a way that it's all the stuff you didn't know. You know, like you, you, you see like, and then everybody each season people ask, oh, but that's not going to go for, you know, like everybody's all constantly like, but what's next? And yeah. he always comes out with like a new kind of type just, of embroidery. It's <laughs> and it's this like mind blowing thing where you're like, but how? How did you just know that everybody wants like, or a it's tiger like a new with animal. a snake? And mm. like, yeah. yeah, it's just like, it's genius, <laughs> absolutely genius. But it's kind of like, again, I think it's very similar to this in a way where it's like for people that have, you know, very specific 
views of on luxury mm. and I think luxury is changing and Definitely. I think hence But Vermont isn't yeah. a luxury how you know mm. it's it's I mean is it's, it's price point not luxury? I mean yeah, it's slightly price point below is, but it's luxury, not about make or any of the things I mean I, I think I'm not gonna like try and social. define all of those different things because they don't exist anymore. But then what is way. it about? It's That's my luxury. question. What is this about? What is it about? But it's about becoming you know like part of like a group of people or at least it was when it started like you bought that like jumper for a lot of money and then you felt like I you were totally you know, I think it's, it's about belonging like, it's, yeah. it's, it's about, about belonging yeah. luxury yeah. that's the new luxury I think people like well, there's people's, all these yeah. surveys about that isn't it like young mm. people don't equate associate luxury necessarily just with having stuff it's all about experience yeah. and it's like think of this as like paying to do a skydive or something yeah. it's like you buy a hoodie and then you feel like you're cool I and think you feel like you're part of a set so it, you're buying an experience so mm. what that really boils down to is actually really disempowering consumers mm. I think that Providing luxury collections oh, that it's lack patron, it's in patronizing, it's patronizing. Yeah. It's so it's providing luxury yeah. collections that are not ambitious, that don't inspire people to really, mm. um, you know, pick up tiger patches and start embroidering yeah. or making clothes themselves <laughs> is <laughs> it's, it's, it's all reductive. High fashion, all high fashion is expensive. Okay, yeah. so that automatically means that vast ways of the, you know of the audience can't buy it yeah and really the you know the inspiration I, I think if any, if there's any inspiration that filters down from high end fashion to like to the youth to the youth to new generations it's it's always been purely visually it's, that's why magazines are so important and have been for so long because that's where the inspiration comes through it's not through purchasing right so mm. and and really actually kind of I don't, I don't think, agree. I, don't think I think there's something to do with heritage in there as well and kind of like things that last that are beyond a little bit beyond fashion mm. Mm. yeah that that's true that but that's and that's like um you know I think um that's that I agree with you there but I I don't think um I, I think this is a spot you make it makes you go to like a thrift shop that's like it makes yeah. you go to an Oxfam it makes that's you not what this stuff? Yeah, I mean, look at look look twenty five. Like, I don't know why wouldn't you be able to? Uh, like, if you go, let me go to the Oxfam and well, the whole point is you could look or like any I was, yeah, 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 like tomorrow, literally, exactly. like I just, or like twenty three. Yeah, like it's just so kind of like. But I actually disagree. I th I think Gucci is more likely to inspire you to go to a thrift shop than this is because Gucci exactly. is like it's oh, precisely. You, know, like, you can be a Gucci girl without wearing Gucci, yeah. and I always have this obsession. Yeah. I think that's what what was, I love so much about medium culture is everyone more with the art so expensive but they inspired this whole generation mm. of like young people well not whole generation all a, a small generation of young people who were interested in fashion mm. to be this certain type of woman yeah. probably through never actually buying anything medium coach off no. maybe mm. something from medium coach or top shop mm. and that is kind of interesting but i think there's an element where that's happening that mom always did it the other way around they saw how people were dressing exactly. already yeah, and yeah, catered yeah. to them exactly yeah but then but like now people actually go and like i you hear people i go like lit to like secondhand shop you hear people oh this is so balenciaga you know like yeah. and yeah. then you just actually hear people say that and I it's like slightly so. cringe but you know just what it is and yes like gucci does inspire to go and like actually like hunt Mm. I think that's what Gucci does. This just makes you, if you really want to look, you can buy it now without really, you it's know. Like no, isn't it's, it edu it's like not really about what you're choosing to wear yourself. It's a educating, educa I mean, that's an elev it's maybe an elevation that's not necessary. But it's, te it's telling people about this, the world we live in, which is a world of brands, a world of stereotyping, a, wor a world of quick visual information that we analyze <coughs> very quickly. We read we judge mm. we're very judgmental yeah. it's, mm. it's about those things that's what's kind of maybe less pessimistic or patronizing about it to me anyway okay. well that's like, what I've always felt with that moment that they do and I think I wrote about this in the Balenciaga review that I did for the show is they don't question society they comment on it mm. and I think that's in a way, I think that's fine. So what is but the it's like, what it's is us the insisting that they're questioning but what it, is the what comment, has caused all this hype. What comment. is the comment that that homeless thing is making? It's, it, it's a comment, and it's, it's literally like, the, it's just showing what, what the world is like. And that's exactly what the show is about. It's all the things that Lisa just said in terms of like immediate visual information, like how one picture, one image alone is enough to tell you so much about something. And that's kind of exactly what they've done with all those logos and stuff. It's, it's kind of the same thing as that. It's, it's this kind of slightly pointless, but it's the kind of comment, you know, when you're like, oh, oh yeah, like, it's, it's just, that's it. There's nothing. And maybe more. also the danger of that, you know, that mm -hmm. like, I know I'm, I'm the kind of like serious one, the, but, but you know, that the we've, we've just experienced kind of two major p kind of voting events in, in the UK and in America, which have been 
which have happened largely as a result of people's uh, prejudice based on quick decision make you know like uh, a lack of kind of deep analysis they should have done a Trump supporter and in yeah they, yeah totally. or maybe <laughs> the whole collection or has yeah. Um, yeah but, but they, that's the thing they would never yeah, do that because exactly. they don't yeah. have that perspective they have that's really the weak politics which involve putting Balenciaga on a Bernie Sanders logo I mean it's just Lazy liberalism. So wait, um, did you like the show? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Basically, sorry. So was that not okay? <laughs> 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 no, but I, I, I think the politics are just lazy. Yeah. I think we have to not. We've got to stop saying that it is just. Well, I think this the, dis- I think the design you know, is just subtle. I think the it's lazy. lazy. But to go yeah. back to mm. Black Mirror, it's not. It, why do we need them to give us a new politic? Like they are reflecting what's going. Like you watch Black Mirror and you're like, this is what we are. Like we kind of like this. And it's that's horrible. a lazy this television show. Yeah, as but, well. it's, it's, but then so, we're yeah. waiting for someone. We're, we're waiting <laughs> for a gatekeeper to be like. Somebody to to wait, uh, that's precisely so yeah, it, yeah. and I yeah, think this exactly. is the kind of purgatory that we're in, <laughs> where we are waiting for the next truly <laughs> exciting <laughs> design. Yeah. 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 And I think if they, you know, if they say, look, this is just a holding pattern for now, guys. Yeah. This is where we're yeah, at. Yeah. You know, but that's kind of what they do say. They're like, we just want to make clothes for, people, for the, what people want to wear today. But that's that's kind of exactly what they say. Well, it's, it's us that's like, <laughs> they're revolutionising. It's Dem is not walking around being yeah. like, oh, I'm changing lives. Exactly. He's like, oh, yeah. I just want to sell clothes. Yeah. Exactly. But then it's not well, really a comment. I, 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 I actually think as a person, he's quite sweet and amazing. Because when you speak to him, he's like, oh, I just want to make some clothes. Like, he's not like... <laughs> I your accent game today. <laughs> You've done great <laughs> accents. <today. laughs> But I think when you're talking about comment, I think, you know, just the fact that they're making a comment that does not make it an okay comment, that's Uh, what, you know, like, like, you know, a grandmother can make a comment, but that does not make it a comment that's, like, worth listening to or, like, appreciate it. But then we are listening, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but that's that's exactly, but kind of like you're talking, like, you know, just you talk, oh, it's a comment on society, but that just instantly does not make it okay. But it's like they're not making a comment on society, they're leaving it blank so that you can fill in your own comment mm. which is even more lazy is they're too afraid of offending someone or having something really strong to say mm. maybe yeah. they have something really strong to no, say no I think that's and it's a precisely the problem with people these days is I think that we're all incredibly afraid of actually saying sticking anything. our um, whatever to the but flag yeah, or whatever so well, there, there was yeah. an amazing quote that was always on the wall of Louise Wilson's office at Central St Martins which was something that Kim Jones overheard on a shoot and I think text it to her or something and it said we've got nothing to say and we're saying it which I think is like so this generation mm. of at a time <laughs> when the world is Quite exactly. possibly collapsing and yeah. imploding. Yeah, but there are people. We have nothing to say. But there are people. We don't. Who are but we're things, saying. But we're just not giving them the same airtime. So, like even right. people like yeah. you know, right. Peters, who's doing, who's you know, with honest buy and that transparency, yeah. you know. There are people who are saying different things. It's because nonchalance is cool yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So yeah. actually, if you speak to any... It's it's much cooler. To, like, if you, like, I, I hate those stupid it's activism fear issues. It's, 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 fear it's fear of commitment. commitment. It's absolutely people yeah. are too afraid yeah. to commit to something and but say I that they honestly but believe it. But I think that's changing. And I think the fact it's changing. It's definitely changing. Like millennials believe that so much. And it has happened. I think it had to get that bad before perhaps people had something mm. else to say. Perhaps. I, I think, I think you know, it. the younger generation is a lot, a lot more passionate and involved and um, interested in politics and kind of social issues mm. than they're given credit for. <coughs> and I think if you're yeah. going to channel the youth of today, you need to do them, you know, due respect. Mm. But then, mm. it's but again, I would just say again, yeah. I don't think they're trying to channel, the, I don't think they're trying to appeal to the to youth. I think they're doing. I don't they're think they're trying to appeal to the youth. I think they're trying to appeal to people who feel like they're not so young anymore and want to still buy yeah, into it. Yeah, want to be. Want to be. But, it's, it's, but they're they're taking something from. They're bottling youth and selling. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but not. Yeah, but I crucially think, uh, not to. But you never kind of not to young. But then no, not to young people. Not but to young people. It's you know. It's like right? it's. it's Every reference, um, you know, when designers use a reference that's really got a strong, say, religious connotation or a strong ethnic connotation, and they just take it on surface value and they don't pay due respect to what it is internally and the inter- integrity of it, they get, you know, rightly ripped apart for that. So why shouldn't, you know, youth culture or mm. street culture or those things be treated with the same respect? Mm. Mm. But I think it's also... No, I, d- I totally agree with you there. I totally I agree mean, with you. You would know this. Like well, maybe you all do, but like people 
interesting kids who were like 90. They're not wearing any of these looks. No, but they're, they're like not even looking at it anymore. That's what I want to say. This, like, is, not, I think it's this is not what young people are The key to it is that like, yeah, it's not talking to, um, it's talking to like a very specific type of person. And I think it's talking to like the people who write fashion reviews, not mm. to name names. Yeah. But but it's 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 they're not just looking at this and they have a million followers. The time, no, 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 but I think so that that's interesting. Well, because I think... Years, that's changed. Wait, what were you going to say? No, because... We can't hear when everyone speaks. I was just saying that I've probably said it before, but you know, when Vetmon first started, the students always, you know, because they always bring in their references and everything, and they were all talking about Vetmon. Were they? No. None of those. No. That's, mm. That's what you were saying. Exactly. And it, I think it's the thing, like, it's, it's, it's the fashion, people who write fashion reviews and who rave about mm. it think that because they rave about it, they're cool and they understand and oh, yeah. they're like, mm. you know, 20 now and we're like all fun yeah. and we went to like a rave at the pomp like the Pompidou, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're actually just sitting at a fashion show that was targeted towards you so you yeah. can write exactly. rave reviews yeah. so someone can buy a t-shirt from them. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's... It's yeah. like non nonchalance <laughs> as cool when we, when we were talking about that. I think like... We were, I was having this discussion here the other day. It was like we need to talk about what's cool again. In like, yeah. I don't think that's everyone's very upset cool about using the word cool. I think, I think, cool. I think it's, it's cool. much more cool to be engaged. <laughs> it's more cool to be engaged. Absolutely. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. And this is selling you nonchalance is cool, kind but of disengagement is cool. Mm. That's a good note to end Removal. on. Which you're conscious of time. <laughs> and I think it's a really good note to end on that it's cool to be engaged. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> Go in March and all that. Exactly. And, like, yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll get, should we give each other a round of applause? Yes. <laughs> not that much. We're not giving him a round of applause. <laughs>